Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look. No, what am I on about? We are going to be talking about the RX 480. Now, there's a lot of hype around the RX 480 at the moment. Obviously, it's the latest card to be released from AMD. Now, uh, I put my review live yesterday, and because all the NDAs were lifted, the uh, partner cards have started coming in today. And I've had a few of them come in. Uh, and they've all got like little overclocks on them and stuff like that. So I started, uh, I wanted to do run some thermal tests quickly just to see if the difference between them, you know, if there was any difference between them and there wasn't. They were all thermally performing the same, which I, made me kind of happy. Uh, I also tried changing the thermal paste on this one and I run some more tests on this one and I was getting the same results. So straight away I can say that uh, by um, changing the thermal paste, didn't get any difference at all really do you know what i mean nothing you know that wouldn't couldn't have been a slight difference difference in ambient temperature you can say that amd have done a pretty good job at mounting the block but something that started to confuse me was i have one card in particular which has a fairly hefty overclock on it and it's just slightly above the overclock that i got on uh, my reference card but it was like that out the box so i started running some tests on it just to kind of loop some results through but something came up and it, it set wheels in motion in my head. And it was that it was scoring the same as a stock card. Not a stock card with an overclock, but a stock normal Bogo, ba uh, Bogo basic card. So I thought to myself, maybe then it's, uh, you know, it's not running its overclock. Open GPU Z, clock is still there. Tried the, one of the other cards, took it out, put it back in again, you know, tried one of the other cards ready, so I replaced it. Their one was running exactly the same scores. So I'm thinking to myself, I've got cards here that have all got overclocks. They should at least be marginally better. Um, so let, we'll put a number on it. 16,500, 3D Mark 11 P score, 16,500. And they're all scoring 16,500. And I'm expecting sort of like 16,900, maybe 17,000 points. So then it started to make me think, well, Maybe it's been overclocked a little bit too much and it's gone over that crest and it's starting to come back down the other side. So I started moving the clocks back down to the point where nothing changed. So then I put all stop clocks in and nothing changed. Then I decided to underclock it a bit and I was getting the same scores. So I'm like, what's going on? Maybe it's getting too hot. We were getting around 83 degrees, so I turned the fans up. No difference. Then, and this was the point that it kind of, a little light bulb went on in my head. There's a lot of talk at the moment about their, these being power throttled. When, if you think about it, if we're down clocking it and we're still getting the same scores, it's obviously hitting its plateau and it's got nothing to do with the clock. So then I thought to myself, well, right, okay. I, when I did my overclock, I pretty much went in and dosed up the um, uh, power target up to 20%, started doing my overclock, and in the end, I just ended up with it max because I turned all the fans up and everything. So, with the um, uh, overclocked card, I put that in, moved the power slider up, boom! Suddenly, all the scores went up. And I mean, literally, and it was like, okay... So this is what we'd be expecting. So with the overclock card, I was getting just shy of uh, 17,000 points. Put the stock card in, no overclock, no overclock at all. Literally all I did was change the power slider. 16,888 points. It was with literally within spitting distance of the um, overclocked card. Tried it with all the others. It's exactly the same thing. So what we ended up deciding was quite literally, these are pretty much built to run as they come uh, from AMD with the stock clocks. And the only way to actually get any more from them is turning the power target up. But if you're only changing the turning the power target up, it does mean that this is thermally, or sorry, power throttled. And I hate the word, and I do, positively hate the word but the power on this card is the bottleneck it's not getting enough as soon as you give it more um a power it's not boosting anymore because it's not like the nvidia cards it's literally allowing the core 
to do uh, more work. So I, um, I'm, I'm not going to quote, but I, I spoke to uh, someone uh, from AMD and I said to them about, you know, what, you know, what's going on. And essentially they said, uh, the way that the cards are tuned is there's a, that they have a graph. And essentially there's, there's a point where you get, uh, you can put more power in and you can get more uh, performance, but the, the heat spike is ridiculous. So you end up getting to a point where it kind of negates uh, what they could do with the card. So essentially what it all boils down to is a stock reference OEM, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, RX480 is pretty much tuned to be able to cope with the um, uh, heat sink that's in there, uh, keep the fan noise down and also most importantly keep the power usage down and there is hidden performance within these cards if you do decide to turn the power target up but then because of the, the there's a negative impact on that then where quite literally if you turn the power target up by 30 percent it does literally use just 30 percent more power it's a, it, it, a direct correlation so um for argument's sake from our testing at stock 288 watts for the full system and i will put the link to the full review underneath overclocked with the power target up it was pulling uh, 350 watts and the only difference was changing that power slider now i'm not saying that's a bad thing but that's where the extra performance come from it was literally munching through more power but it munches through power um, um, beyond when you move that power target up it munches the power much much more it's almost like a car driving through the air in that it doesn't take much fuel for it to do 50 mile an hour but it takes twice as much fuel for it or force or however the scientific mal malarkey is go watch top gear when uh, um james may did the veyron test but when you get up to 100 mile an hour it's having to force its way through air that's like twice as thick so it takes lots more fuel and power to be able to force it through i'm sure they did it beyond 200 mile an hour it was like the air was like driving through custard or something because there's so much of it and that's kind of you know like an idiot's version because let's face it i'm an idiot of what this card is kind of having to deal with to get that extra power it needs loads more fuel it's like having to stoke thomas the tank engine up with loads and loads more coal so i wanted to let you know that if you've bought an overclocked card uh check your scores check them with reviews and see what you're getting because you may end up getting to the point where you have to go into the Wattman settings and increase your power slider if you want that extra performance. It's definitely something for people to have a play around with. Um, but I personally think that these cards were absolutely perfect or as near as damn it, AMD did an amazing job with them to come out like this at a price point, uh, with the amount of power that they wanted them to use and the amount of uh, performance that they wanted to deliver as well. Beyond this point, you need, for starters, uh, you need better cooling because uh, as soon as you touch that power slider, the temperatures go up. And something that I can say as well is uh, once they get into 93 or 94 degrees, they're throttling. In that, they will uh, start to um, pull themselves back so you do need to play with the fans uh, and i found that in the end with my um overclock once i was getting around the sort of like 20 percent or uh 20 percent power slider or more i was uh starting to get to the point where it was getting up you know around that 93 degrees mark so you know that once you get to that point if you're in a warm room or something you're actually the card isn't even going to be running at the the best it possibly can be so with that, we know that the aftermarket cards with better coolers are going to be able to unleash more power. Uh, but the other thing that we found because of that power target thing is that really this six pin isn't enough. And there's a lot of chit chat online about it. And I've heard that AMD are probably going to have an announcement about it tomorrow. But this six pin, once you start playing and going beyond the reference spec, this isn't enough. And you end up, you do end up drawing a lot more power through the PCI Express. 
Now, uh, if you pull uh, too much power through the PCI Express, uh, with a high-end board, you're probably going to be okay. But with a low-end board, pulling too much power through this could, in over time, let's face it, you don't gain for an hour a night, but over time, you could end up actually starting to uh, damage and degrade the board. So um, what we do need with these is we do need at least an eight pin on this. I would probably say that some of the uh, larger um, manufacturers are probably gonna end maybe a six and an eight or two sixes on them. I don't know, we literally don't know which way it's gonna swing at the moment, but I can pretty much guarantee if they've got a big cooler on and it's all about overclocking, then you're going to need more power and that's something that we don't really talk about very often is actually needing more connectors on it rather than less because that's what we normally say is oh it's got too many you know why it's got a six and an eight it only really needs you know a six um so that is something that we're going to have to play about with at time as well so my most important thing that i'm trying to get across here is with this card at least the aftermarket cards are actually going to be quite interesting to review in that have they put extra power on how good is the cooler going to be how much extra performance can we get out of the, the 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 core itself but then that does bring me back to the point that these cards or at least with the ones that i've had my hands on so far the uh, performance bonuses from buying an overclock card is actually zero in that if they've not changed that power target, and I'm going to assume that there's going to be some changes, get rushed out now because in the old days you could overclock the card uh, with the, the core and you change the megahertz, and that was the way you made a card quicker. I think this is one of the first times where I've ever actually had a card in my hand that was quite literally running the best it possibly could be with the power that was available, and you quite literally adding, you know, overclocking it does no difference and you have to add more power to get more from it so that's the very very clear thing but the problem as i've said if you add more power to it, it means it's going to get hotter so when you send it to a reviewer like me i say yes yeah, marginally quicker but now we're up to 90 degrees with the cooler it, it's never going to be a, a win-win thing and one thing i will say as well because i'm not trying to bash amd at all because it does its job it's just the stuff that's coming with the aftermarket the the vendor cards that are coming out with the overclocks and stuff. The overclocks are pretty worthless unless they've touched that power thing. And the ones I've got, they haven't. But the other thing, and I will hold my hands up, it has uh, uh, brought light to the fact that when I did my overclocking on this, I probably rushed it because normally the power target thing would have been something that I would have picked up. So this video is also me putting my hands up and going, sorry, this time I've probably not done my job properly. But at least now, I think it was when the other cards come in and I was getting the same scores, it set off alarm bells with me. But anyway, so I just wanted to let you know, this is not a video that I've done lightly. I have spoken to a lot of people today. There's a lot of people out there that know this video is coming as well. So don't think I've done it, doing it to be an ass. I'm just doing it to try and uh, give you a heads up. So if you want to get the most performance from your RX 480, especially if you've got one of these reference ones, and I know a lot of them have been sold, don't worry about the megahertz. Don't worry about that. No, it's all about the power target. But as soon as you touch that power target, most critical thing is you're going to have to ramp the fans up as well. And when we close with that and say ramp the fans up as well, I now understand why EK have got a water block out. Yes. Maybe they were a lot cleverer than the rest of us. So, I'm going to leave my card with Johnny Five. Cheers, Johnny. Yeah, no disassemble. Anyway, right, so that's it. Whole point in this video is to spark discussion. So, uh, drop in underneath, come to the Overclock 3D forums and talk to us about this. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, comments underneath, I will do my best to keep um, uh, on top of. But one thing I will say is this is likely going to be something that's going to evolve over time. And I think really the answer uh, is going to come with the uh, vendor card, the aftermarket cards. If you're looking for overclocking, I think really because we know that you need to turn that power target up, it's going to get hot. It's all going to come down to how many power connectors that we've got on it and how good the coolers are to be able to tame that heat. But I do believe 
There's a lot more to these to come. So that's a very positive thing, and that's something I'm really trying to lynch hold of, is that I do think there's a lot more in these than we've actually been allowed to have, to the point where I genuinely think that they, uh, like I've explained, they're bottlenecked, but they've done it because of that awkward graph and it kind of negating. Yeah, we're not gonna go round and round in circles. I know I'm not very good at explaining about it. Love to hear your thoughts. I'm gonna get back to swinging in my villain chair. I just need a, a little cat to stroke. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with a rather unusual video for him, out. Thank <laughs> you.